everyone, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we are going to play with the Neo colors. A lot of you saw me show these in one of my recent videos and I've gotten lots of messages asking me to show a Neo color tutorial. And I've done lots of backgrounds and things like that with the Neo colors, but I don't think I've ever actually used them on a page for something else. So I have Flora by Maria Trolle and I've been working on the Fairy House page in this book. If you saw one of my most recent videos where I showed you how to use a color wheel to plan out your color pages, you'll recognize the page we're going to be working on today. There is some water on that page and I thought today that we can color the water on the page and use Neo Colors to do that. If you check the description box down below, I will have everything down there that you see in this video as well as links to my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also have channel membership. You can find more information about that by clicking the join button down below the video. So if you saw my last video, you probably remember this page. And so I do want to continue on this page. I have some water down here that I have to color. It's a very small amount of water, but I thought in this video I could show you how to use the Neo colors and we could do that by coloring the water. And I may actually use the Neo colors on some other parts on this page because I really do want to start using my Neo colors more. I don't pull them out often enough at all. So what I'm imagining for this water is to go with colors that are more of a bluish green. I am from Florida and I've been to the Keys. And if you go to the Keys, you will know the water has that really beautiful aqua color or certain other places in Florida, like the beaches in Fort Myers. They've got really gorgeous aqua colored water and it's so beautiful. So I'm going to add a little bit of that to some typical blues and I'm gonna see what I can come up with. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s, they are a water soluble crayon and they are wonderful to work with. They blend beautifully even before you add the water. We are going to be adding water and try to perfect the effect of water. So I'm gonna see what I can come up with. Now these are a little bit pricey. They are $149.95 and there are 84 colors in here. If you pull this top tray up, you can see the other colors that are here. I have the white one pulled out. That's what goes there, but they've got some grays down here and then that is where the white is. But there are some gorgeous colors in here. We've got some beautiful, really bright, gorgeous yellows. I love the yellows in this set. Like I said, I do want to go with a color that's more of a blue green for the water. So I think I'm going to go with this color here. It's cobalt blue and then I'm going to need a lighter blue. This one is light cobalt. And I think I'm also gonna use the white. I like to use the white just to add a little bit of highlights. So we'll see what happens. I might have to grab a Posca pen as well. So not all my tips on my Neo colors are very sharp. The white one, I don't like to keep sharp because I like to use it to fill in bigger areas. So I like to keep it more blunt like this. And then this one, I'm going to be covering more space. So I want to make sure that I keep that one a little bit more blunt like that. But this one, I think that I'm going to need to sharpen it a little bit. They do on them have these little arrows here showing you that you can pull the paper back and then so you can sharpen them. But I don't like sharpening my Neo colors too much because they are so expensive. <laughs> And if you saw my last video, I have all this, what looks like to be sand back here. It doesn't look like it's grass. It looks like it's probably some kind of sand or like a hill with dirt or something like that, that the house is sitting on top of. And I was trying to decide what I was gonna do with that and what colors I was gonna use. I haven't decided on colors yet, but I may do all of that with Neo colors as well. And it may look better as grass, different shades of green than what I used here in the fairy house. If you would like to see what I decide and you would like to see a video following up, to this one, let me know. But I've already used this page for a couple tutorials and I'll link those tutorials in the upper right hand corner. On this tree over here, I showed you how to create texture. I did color a whole other tree in this book and then finished off this one. And this tutorial here was a tutorial showing you how to use the color wheel to plan out your page when you've already got a lot of the same colors and you just wanna liven it up a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start laying down our colors. And I think I'm gonna start with the darkest color. So I'm going to start with my cobalt blue and the artist drew in all these little ripples in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Neo color and I'm just going to go right around those. I'm going to try to use the sharpest side so that I don't lay down too much color because this color is rather dark and I'm just making very thin thin lines when you grab your water brush or whatever it is you decide you are going to use to add water and blend your colors together. It will pull all these colors 
colors together really nicely. I want to line the back edge right here where the water meets that hill. But I love when the artist draws lines like this on different things like water or trees so that it sort of gives us a guide as to where to lay our colors. It makes it so much easier and it gives you a guide to be able to follow. I'm adding a little bit more right there, but it doesn't matter really how you lay the color down with the Neo colors because once you add the water, it's going to look very different. And if you laid your crayons down in a sort of circular motion or back and forth, you are not going to be able to tell after you lay the water down. My tip really isn't that sharp on this crayon, so I'm trying to just do what I can. And I don't want to add too much of this color where I've got the real small spaces. Now I'm going to grab my next color, which is the light cobalt blue. And I'm going to use this color to just pull that color out just a little bit and blend it right in. And it's going to change the color just a little bit because I am going over that color and creating a blend of these two colors, but I am going to pull it down just a little bit further and I'm still gonna work on leaving a little bit of space for white because I do want some highlights to be seen in my water. If you haven't seen my Neo Color tutorials for backgrounds, I'll go ahead and try to link one of those in the upper right hand corner of this video, but these are so super fun to use. I just really want to start using them much more to do other things on coloring pages rather than just backgrounds. And I think I'm going to be able to create a pretty cool looking water effect, but I'm just laying it right on top of that other color and pulling it down just a little bit, but not too much, because like I said, I do want to keep some white space. And I'm trying to lighten up that darker color just a little bit, but I'm so excited about this page. I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like when it's done. But there were a couple tutorials I wanted to do on it, so it's taken me a while to finish it because I don't wanna work on the page if I want to make a video with it. <laughs> But I think this might be the last video I do with this page. I don't know yet. If you want to see what I end up doing with the hilly area right here, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. Now I'm trying to decide what to do around the boat. I don't know if I want that darker or if I want it lighter. But I think this is going to be a pretty quick tutorial. I just really wanted to show you all that the Neo colors are not just for backgrounds. You can use them for so many other things. And I love using water soluble mediums on my coloring pages. If you've been watching my videos for quite some time, you probably know that I'm a little obsessed with the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. Those are one of my absolute favorites because when you add the water, the color just becomes so vibrant and intense. So they are so super cool. Now I have my white and in all the spaces where I left white space, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Now I am probably gonna come back later with a Posca, but this color is going to blend some of these colors together even before I come in and add the water. And I think it's probably gonna lighten them up just a little bit, which is what I'm trying to do. See how it sort of pulls all the colors together? And then here where I didn't lay any blue, it just blends that color out, that darkest color just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come back and lay another layer of my lighter blue. When you're using your Neo colors, you wanna make sure that you do get quite a bit of that color on there. I usually like to add a second layer because when I come back with the water, it really intensifies that color that much more and it makes it much easier to work with the water because you've got enough color down there on the page to be able to move around. I'm still trying to stay out of all the spaces where I wanted to see a lot of white. And I'm not gonna add more of my darker color because I feel like the darker color is really super dark already. If I need more of it, I'll come back and add a second layer after I add water. So when you're using your Neo Colors or any other water soluble medium, you probably wanna keep a napkin right next to you so that you can brush off your brush. The Derwent water brushes come with a one, a two, and a three. This is the number one brush which is the smallest one. I don't have a lot of space to work with, so I think this number one brush is going to work the best. But to get the water going, I'm just gonna push down like this and make sure I get enough on my brush. And then I'm gonna start here adding the water and I'm gonna pull up into the lightest color and then over the darkest one. And I'm gonna brush my brush off. 
in between all these very small spaces, I want to make sure that I do that very carefully because I do want to leave that white there, but I do want to spread the color out as well. So I'm going to come over here and start where the white is and then pull up into the lighter color and then into the darker one and then maybe try to spread the color around just a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and do the same thing and then pull up into the lightest color and then the darkest one. And you can move your colors around just a little bit. I'm trying to create the effect of water, so I sort of want the colors to be moved around just a little bit. Let me go ahead and go over the darkest color first here and see how that looks. Eh, I think I like it the other way around. And you can experiment when you're using these and see what you like best, but now I need to go back and try to fix it. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it looks okay. Let's go ahead and go all around here. I don't have a whole lot of space down here underneath. <laughs> see in some spaces I'm pulling that darker color down just a little bit and blending it in just a little bit more because I don't want all the different sections to look the same. Here I want to be really really careful because these are really really small spaces here but I think I think so far it looks pretty good. I'm definitely glad that I used the smallest brush as I don't think that the larger one would have worked. We go ahead and spread this lightest blue out in these spaces here. And then maybe here I could just pull it up and around the boat where I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. And then I could always come back and fix it and add some Posca or something to whiten it up a little bit more if I decide I wanna do that later. I think I'm definitely going to want to add more color all throughout here where I've got these rings going around the boat. I don't know, I thought using a water medium to create water would be the best thing to do rather than using colored pencils because the colored pencils just are not going to look the same. I'm trying to give it kind of that water effect by just pulling the color around and going kind of zigzag back and forth. And here I'm just going to go straight over these because the spaces here are so, so small. But I think so far it looks good. We're not done yet though. You pull this up just a little and do that zigzaggy motion. <laughs> but if you feel like you get your darker color in the spaces where you don't want it a little bit too much, there is a fix for that. So don't worry. But I do love that darker color that I chose. Just trying to pull the colors around just a little bit more. Again, using that zigzaggy motion to make it look a little bit more like water. After you get your colors all spread out and you experiment just a little bit, it's so much easier to decide what you want to do or how you want it to look. But you really need to play around with different mediums that you're unsure of or that you've not used before so that you can get used to them and see what you like. So I really like how it looks so far and I think leaving the white space, I think that really gives it that water ripply effect. But I think I want to add a little bit more of my lighter blue and then blend it out again. And I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more into where I have that white space, but I'm not gonna cover the white space. I just really want it to have more of a blended look. So I think I'm also going to add a little bit more of my darker color. And I think this will make the white space stand out quite a bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over it with the water a second time. I'm still going to leave that white space, but I'm gonna do a little bit more of that zigzaggy motion that I was doing before. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. I think it's starting to look more and more like water. And you know, I've never done this before, so I feel like if I can do it, you can do it too. This is the very first time I actually ever tried to create water. Now I will say that I did practice a little bit on another page just to see what I could come up with, but that was the only other time I tried it out. A lot of times before I do a tutorial for y'all, I will practice the technique a little bit and see what I can come up with before before I actually film it because I want to make sure that I have it right before I make a video. <laughs> but oh my gosh, I really love it. Y'all have to let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're going to try this, 
I would love to see it. You could share it in my Facebook group. And if you want, you can tag me to make sure that I see it. I'm gonna wait a minute for it to dry and I'm gonna add some Posca just to brighten up some more of that white space. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna lay the Posca down so that it still looks like water. But these will dry pretty quickly. So I think I can go ahead and start laying the Posca down but I'm gonna lay the Posca down and I'm gonna go sort of back and forth like this. And then I'm gonna use my finger and just tap it. And I'm just gonna do it like this everywhere. And right here, I think I want a lot more white. But I think the Posca really makes a huge difference over here where I laid too much. I think I want it to look more white around the boat rather than what I would normally do. And then in here, I want these to look like two rings that are puddled around the boat. Oh, I think that looks super cool. But oh my gosh, you could do so much with Posca pens, but you may end up with a white finger. <laughs> but that's okay, it's totally worth it. You can do so many different cool effects with your white paint pens. Even if you just have a generic white paint pen and not a Posca, you can surely do the same thing. But oh my gosh, I think I love this. Just make sure you tap it out with your finger. But I think I did a pretty good job creating water for the first time. You'll have to let me know what you think, but you could add as much white as you want to, to give it that water effect and make it look sort of ripply. And you don't even have to use the Posca pen. You can really do whatever you want. And I want it really white underneath here, under and around the boat. But I think it's done and I love it. So the water is done and I think I did a fairly good job after only trying it out one time and then actually doing it for the video tutorial. <laughs> So I feel like if I can do it, and even if you're a beginner, I feel like you can do it too. But the Neo Colors are so much fun. If you don't already have a set, I would start out with just a smaller set. I had a smaller set of 10 that I used to use when my kids were homeschooled or that I had bought for an art curriculum. And I pulled those out when I first started my YouTube channel because I wanted to try them out and I fell in love with them. So I had to have all 84 colors, but now I just need to work on pulling them out a whole lot more and doing more with them. Everything that you've seen me use in this video, I will have linked down in the description box. I hope y'all have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.